Welcome back. Today we're gonna do the belly bumper craw. This is a uh, this fly. It's been it's only been around for a few years. This is it's springtime. This is uh, just an exceptional small crayfish platter. It's great for ice out anywhere you fish. If you're a dragger, if you like you know running under a bobber, this thing is unbelievable. It's just a really small profile crayfish, super simple, rides upside down, you know, rides with its uh, nose up like that, so because it's gonna have the weight down here. And all it does, it gives you a really clean little, you know, profile. You can do it in a bajillion colors. We do it in olive. I like, the, Jeremy likes that dark. I like this lighter one. Uh, the tan one's great. You can do it in any color you want. And so, but it's a super simple fly, and it and one of the beauties of crayfish flies that, you know, it seems like the more intricate they get, that it, it's just harder to you know get them to fish right. This one just fishes. It's you can dead drift this as a nymph too, by the way. So it's pretty simple. It's going to be the hook. Um, we've had this is the U106 series, and this six you can die, you can tie this down to a ten if you want to. You know, in, this, in, in July, you're gonna have tons of little tiny crayfish from that big to that big. And as they start developing their pinchers, you know, where they're hanging out, that's when something like this, this is a small crayfish. And so, but that's, it's just like, this is trout food, man. They, they live on these things. The one thing I have found out after just, uh, I, I know I've been a taxidermist for, since the 70s, I've, I've done thousands of fish. And the one thing that's common to almost every trout, if there's a crayfish in it, when in the old days when we, you know, when we were mounting them before the reproductions and stuff, you would find a piece of a crayfish in virtually every fish I mounted. I don't care what it is, including pike. I mean, but trout for certain, you found something that had to do with a crayfish no matter what. And so this is the U-series hook there. That's the Econo series. And you can see, I haven't put it in the vise yet, but it's got a bend to it. So you can see right here, so that bead's gonna sit right on that. So it's belly, boom, down it goes. It's gonna ride like this. So obviously this is gonna be pretty much uh, weedless and you know rockless. So we're gonna have, and that's gonna be this bead. This is gonna be a 3 16 copper uh, tungsten. This, we want it heavy. We want it to go down. We want it to drop, and you're gonna you can pick this thing up, and it will undulate like this. For body, uh, semi seal. You can use a semi seal dark olive. I believe on mine, I used the SLF. I used uh, I, I just really dig Whitlock's colors. He, he's just really good, and I can't remember. I think it's a shrimp olive. I can't remember, it, but it again, you're gonna use whatever color. I do them with that little orangey color right there. Whatever you just wing it go crazy uh leg wise it's just barbed uh sexy floss that's going to be your leg those are just their their legs and antenna at the same time and then the kicker is just the the squirrel skins these these are one of the more when you get down to it this is such a versatile but it's something you should always have and you get it zonked you know get them zonked because then you can use them as zonker strips but there is a lifetime of caddis collars and different hair that you can get out of one of these pine squirrels. Um, we do it for a lot of the caddis, it's just different colors, but it stuffs, and it's all micro zonked on these, on these little ones. They're all little, real fine. So the thing's just super, super swimming. So I got a, this is mine now, forever and ever. That was already mine, just because we want to keep with this color. So I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna use GSP 100, you could use 50, you could use, you're not gonna, there's not a whole lot of, uh, you're not doing a whole lot with your thread on this as far as you're gonna set the, the legs and stuff like that. So you could, but you could use finer thread if you wanted to. Kick so, that thing out again, sorry. Oops, sorry. Keep it going, or no, not that, the, just the skin. Oh, the skin, yeah, there you go. my bad. Hook good? Yep. So you're gonna do this, you're gonna to have to do this. You're gonna see that you've, you've got a you've got the bead here, and you're gonna to have to work around this thing. You can go around. You can go over top of the bead if you want to cut it off, and uh, I'll probably cut mine off and then just redo it with my dubbing. Uh, I, I did it both ways when I first started doing the thing. I just I think I went right over the top of it. I don't remember, but it's so we're gonna do right here. We're gonna start. If you're gonna set the bead and and you want to change you know you know your dubbing to go over top of it we want that bead to be right there 
That's going to be the belly bumper part that's going to hold it down on the bottom, just like that. No matter what you do with this fly, it's going to ride like this. It's going to hook up, point up. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to put a pair of legs in before it's going to have, and I'll show you this fly. It's got a little nose down here. Get back out of there. It's got a little bitty nose down here, which is going to have legs here, legs here, and legs here. Then we're going to start the claws, put those in, and then we'll do the, the zonker strip down the back. Leave these long, really long, and then just play with it. Get, you, can, you can tie them in however you want. I'm going to just fold these over, take this first one, just set it. And if you stretch these when you set them, I, I, I wrapped it around and I stretched them and I sat those and I come in here like that. So there's that too. And I'll show you another way to do that if you don't, if you want to do singles, but I'm just going to show you two ways to do this. And it's just kind of a, it's kind of a step saver. So here's a pair of them right here. And I want, I want those to come down the bend of the hook a ways. So right here, Put in a pair right there, move down. All right, so there's our same way. And get these, just kind of idea where you want that. And now we're going to dub this. And I just touched up or finger dub this on the beginning. And when I get up here, I'm going to do a loop. But right now I'm just setting these legs. So I'm going to take just a, a little bit of dubbing. This isn't, this is just the beginning of the little nose cone. Just a little bit here. And dub that. Come right up to them. And then we're just going to figure eight that just one time. And then we're going to dub backwards over top of that and push those back. So it saves us setting them twice. The next set we're going to, the next ones we're going to. You could put three in if you wanted to. Uh, I'm just going to do two and then the third one. So pull those back. Just wrap right over it. Not so tight that you, you... You can adjust these now as you go where you want as far as how wide you want those, how far you want those apart. So I just want them kind of hanging out there. Looks a little bit sloppy. Hello, dogs. What would a video be without interference from dogs? Beat it. I want a little bit more dubbing right there. Just didn't like the way that looked. Okay. One more set right here. And these are just, these are basically going to get covered up for the most part. Missed you. Hello, Ellie Belly. Beat it. Can't you see I'm busy? So figure eight those. Just I, I figure eighted it. Pick them up. Set them where you want them. I got a figure eight over the top. One, two turns. Cinched. Now a little bit more dubbing here. And you can see, you know, you can just take the, a sample look and you can see how big that is. There's, there's two, two, and one more here. So make the second or the third one. I don't know if these are legs or if they're... Hey, that was a bad dubbing job right there. They're, they're kind of half legs, half antenna, half who knows what. So just get that. Set these so that they... I'm going to set my... I'm going to set my legs on the side here. I'm going to set them right off. I'm going to right in front of this bump. And so it kind of pushes them away from that. And then we're going to have a little tiny collar set in there too. So take your squirrel skin. Just pick a pair that looks just right to you. That one looks just right to me. And there's no real way to tell you how long to do these because I do them all different lengths. Uh, it's about an inch and a half. Make them long, air long on the, on the, when you put it in there for the first one because if it's too short, 
that's not good. You know the story of that. So, I'm going to tie these. Now, remember, this is going to ride this way. Not, not that that matters. Just, but right in front of this bump. I had a big hook in that before. Right in front of this bump. And don't worry about, don't worry about building bulk with these, you know, leave them forward just so you get a nice clean tie in and off to the side, come right to the side of that bump and cinch it down. Don't, you can't, if you're using GSP, you cannot cr really crank on this. Uh, this is really fine. And if you really, really crank on these, you're going to cut this, this material. So we're going to, I got the, this side, you're going to see when you put against this bump, like I said, don't, you can't really crank on this stuff, but just make sure that you get it on each side of this, build a little body right there, build nice and tight. But make sure when you look down over top of this, that they're, they're dead on. Don't reef on this because this is, this is pine squirrel. It's a really fine skin. You just nice tight tension so that it's out around the bump. The bigger you make that, the more it'll flare them around. When you look at a crayfish when it swims, which it does very little actually, they crawl almost exclusively, but when you see it, their their pinchers are together and there's always this air gap right between their, their, their where their nose is, where their legs are reaching around. And that's what you're trying to get right here. So this fly is gonna ride upside down, and you'll see on these things it's so it's right here's the where they're gonna be together. If you want to put a little bit of a carpus or nose right there. I do it on this side. It's going to have the, the zonker strip on the top. If you want to cover this up right here, you can. I don't, you don't have to. So, we're in like Flynn there. I'm going to find my, we got a different one. You got to put our copper in. So, we got to have a counter rib for this. I'm just using, this is brassy copper. If you wanted to, and I should have left my strip up here. If you wanted to, I like to tie this in right where my thread ends where, from tying the legs in. I come in right in here and I'm in a little bulk because we're going to slide this back and I want that to stay right there. So when you come up here with your copper, bend it around and you know that's going to stay right there. Just build a little bulk out of it. Just give it, you know, with your copper. You're going to, it's going to build up with the, uh, a little more than I needed. It's going to build up with the, dubbing too and then we're going to have this zonker strip that goes right over top of it so there's the bottom of the fly look it over take your zonker strip this one i'm going to look for one that's maybe a little bit wider a little bit more fuzzy here's a good that's the bottom of this is kind of thicker right there i might use that but i'd rather find one that was just kind of all the same width right there this one's just just a touch thicker than the rest of them and off he goes now remember when you tie this in the i'm going to flip this over because it's easier for me at this point when you tie this in still in focus there yep you're going to you have to tie it and fold it back so you, you make sure that you tie it in the right direction because if you don't the hair is going to be going forward right so you tie it with the hair going the opposite. So it's going that direction. We're going to tie it in. And when I fold that over, it'll all be laying back. See? See? And I had a little bit. You can see how there's a little bit of taper right there. Just a little tiny bit. I'm going to leave that and I'm going to cut about that much off. So I cut that off and I'm going to tie it upside down. And what that's going to do, it's going to allow me to, when I fold it over, that's going to stick back as kind of the nose cone. But make sure that you're all the way into it. And I'm going to build a little bulk with this right here. So just separate that. It's kind of a pain getting this in. Just tip it over. And you can fight you a little bit. There you go. Now, before anything, before you tighten everything down and go moving forward, double check that you got a nice clean tie-in right there, that that hair is going to stay back. 
Got plenty to polymer forward. And you can see we're going to build a little, I don't want this twisted. I'm looking just, you just got to play with that a little bit. Pull it just a little. It's got to lay flat right there. Once you're in, take it right back to where they start. Take this leather all the way to where that, where this, you know, you're trying to hit the bottom of this bend right here. Take it right to it. Fold it over. That's what I was saying. That'll stop all this movement of that uh, bead. Just leave a leave that notch right there. Leave that little build up. And now when we cut that off to start, you know, I'm gonna go over. If you want to go over the top of it, and I can, we can do that too. But we're just gonna so leave that back there. Everything's nice and tight. Nice clean wraps. I'm gonna dubbing loop this. Come back here. So this is where if you if you want to go over the top of that right there with our dubbing, uh, you can go right over the top of it because we're going to cover it. It sometimes I mean I I do it both ways. In the first ones I cut it off because I was trying to make really clean ones. Uh, you can cut it off and do another dubbing loop right here if you want. So. Now uh, there's really no taper to this body, so I'm going to just going to build this loop in the material right here, kind of all the same length or width. I mean, not length. Just get it all set up. We don't have much to do. We only got this little bit right here. Set that and. The one thing you'll notice about crayfish when you when you when you look at them in, in nature if you're underwater looking at them is that they don't really swim that much we even though we've got tons of stuff that imitates these things you know with the pinchers my nancy p and all that swimmy stuff most of the time they don't swim they just they crawl around I, I did a seven hour study on these things underwater. It's boring as hell. And it was like, they just don't do anything. And you poke them and they would go and you just watch and watch and watch and watch. And they don't ever, I just kept waiting for them to swim and do things and they never really did. But when I did poke one or some reason one would, would you know, swim a little ways, what you see, it's so, it, it's all there is to it. They're kind of tubular. And what you see is this dark light, dark light, dark light. Every time they'd scoop their butt to swim, they would turn sideways and they'd be lighter. And so it's nice to have that contrasting color in these things because if they do swim, they get a, that's what you'll, the fish will actually see. So we're just going to dub that up close to the body right there, come up here. And I'm going to jump the hook just in the, for time's sake. You can see it, it won't do much. Ran out of dubbing, just a little bit short there. I'm jumping that, just if you want to cut that off and do it twice, go for it. I ran out of dubbing, just a little bit short of the target. Not much. Ring a ding ding. We never get through one of these without a phone ringing. Stay up there. Tighten up your stuff, mister. Bingo. Okay. Looks like my dubbing moved over. We'll get to that in a second. That's why I cut it off and redo them because it drives me crazy when I have to do that. So, there's our fuzzy little body. I'm gonna come in here, pull this. I'm not gonna pull this super tight, but I am gonna stretch it just a little bit. Make sure that my connection right here is where I want it, everything's squared up. I'm right over the top of this thing. I'm dead over the top. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna pull it just, I'm not stretching it, I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and you know firm. And then I'm gonna, Give it a single turn, 
and then I'm going to do it again and just double check if everything's clean. That's where I want it. And then I can get it out of the way and just secure this on this end. we got to still have to palmer it. But Ooh, cut that a little long. We'll get to that in a second. Oh, that was kind of sloppy. Oh, I hate sloppy. Now, there's no easy way to tell you how to do this one. You just kind of eyeball it. And make sure your first one, that's why I kind of tighten that down just a little bit and just kind of manipulate through it. I don't have a secret way to do that. I just kind of look. Chubby little body on this guy. Might have overdubbed that. I haven't tied one of these in a long time. Just kind of work your way through, coming forward, just keep them over. Nice clean turns. Work your way forward. You just don't want to, like right there, I was grabbing a bunch of hair. Just move it and then there's no real way to stop it from catching a few of them. There we go. At least no way I know of. Somebody might know a way. Looks pretty clean. I think we need one more right there. I just keep looking. I just come back here and if there's, if I pulled some over, I just manipulate it. And I'm still going to take my bodkin and look and do go through there. <clears throat> Give it a couple here. You can just come in and pop that. Gonna clean this up with your thread right over your wire. It'll clean up that head nicely. There you go. Like that. Give me you going over that wire. You kind of catch them. I don't know. Bugs me a little bit. And then we can just come in here. Tighten that down, and like I've done in lots of videos, take your Sharpie and just, because I'm using the clear thread, and I just hit it with that. If you want to use the other color thread, that's fine. You know, whatever, olive, whatever you want. Uh, or if you want to use a lighter one. Now take your, I'm using a finer bodkin than my, than my uh, dubbing tool. I'm going to come in here, and I'm just going to look to see if there's any trapped like right there I think I've got a little bit of trapped material and just pull it out without try not to hook your wire and so I had a little bit of trapped material right on the other side so where, when my wire went over I kind of pushed the hair down and without you know don't go too deep into it just pull in and real lightly just pick that hair out and if you see some trapped Pick it out, it'll all be nice and uniform. Give that head a little spot of glue. Normally I'd be using lacquer, but I left my lacquer. I left my jar undone and it's all gooed up and shouldn't have done that. Now, while that's kicking, I'm gonna take a look at everything and make sure that my legs are nice and I've got lots of legs sticking all over the place. My pinchers are... I was glued to the fly for a second there. My pinchers are down. Um, Bring it out a bit. Oops, sorry. There you go. The, the, the legs are going to stay apart. You can see they're nicely laid down there. When this gets wet, it's going to... I'm going to hook myself a hundred times trying to do that. When that gets wet... Ouch, ouch, and ouch. Sharp hook. That'll all go down and go right between there and look like it's nose. So it'll just, it'll lay over top of that and it'll be kind of pointy like a nose. You got your antenna or your legs. If you want to cut those to different lengths, we just leave them out there hanging it. I don't think it seems to matter. And so that is the belly bumper. It's a very simple fly. Your, your bead will stay down so that thing will ride. If you want to take this, if you want to bend that even a little bit more, because I did the first ones, I, I just bent the hook. I didn't. I didn't use these hooks and I just bent them and I actually bent it a little bit more than that. If you want to, fine. It doesn't really matter. It, it'll hunt just fine, just like this. 
Want to change the size of the beads for how deep of water you fish, how fast of water you fish. Everything's cool. You know, it's, there's no, there are no rules. So that's the fly you can see from all directions. Uh, it's got legs. It, it's hard to get it in the vise because of the way it's, maybe we'll have to do it this way. So that's the belly bumper craw. It's got a nice, like again, it's a, it's a great early season. It's a great ice out fly. I love watching this thing drop. I mean, drop it out on the ice, pull it off, let it sink. It'll just you do it on a floating line, do it on a sinking line, doesn't matter. But it, when this is wet, all that's going to lay down. It's going to look like it's back. You're going to have a great two-tone. And that's really a lot to crayfish in my mind, is that if you two-tone where you can see a light dark, light dark, even if it's not, you know, moving that fast, you can still see this clean break. It's a super fishy fly. This is one of Jeremy's favorite flies. Jeremy probably fishes crayfish more than all of us. And this is one of his favorites, so that's saying a lot. So, because he don't fish things that don't hunt. So anyway, that's it. Hope you liked it. Stay safe out there. Hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.